Hey guys, this is Scully Welly with yet another video. This time it's finally here, my Jude speed set. Yes, yes, I finally gonna make, well, I made it the Jude speed set. So why should you need a speed set? If you're a farmer, it makes your life way easier when it comes to running because you can actually run at the same speed or even more than your actual mount as you can see here at the moment at the top here where my cursor is i got a 215.5 percent speed and that's not even maximum yeah this is an easy to obtain set this is not the maxed out speed set you can get maxed out but that requires a bit more grinding a bit more um farming and there is rng involved so i'm gonna try to leave the rng out as much as possible as you can see i'm running here at 216 percent speed and it will be higher with consumables even that you can get really easy from the auction house so let's talk about that as well so what i'm gonna cover here is what races are best what professions are best what gear you need and what order you need to get your stuff okay so the races are for horse there's been basically only one decent option and that's a zandarali Zandar, zandalari troll do it why it gives you raw speed and that comes from the zandalari troll racial called embrace of gunk and that will increase your movement speed by five percent then we are going to Alliance. Alliance has a few more options, but still there is only one really good one. And that's Night Elves. Night Elves are the best race for the Alliance overall and have a few advantages. Firstly, their racial quickness grants 2% movement speed. That's a pure raw movement speed. They also have another racial called Touch of Elune that will increase your crit rating during the day. Not, in the, not when it's night and woe, but during the day. This will be extremely useful for the long strider as a right armor trait, as we'll be aiming to stack crit for the effect. That will become more clear later on in the guide. Lastly, night elves possess possibility of, of one of the most useful farming abilities. They have the possibility of that item. It's called, well, not item, but it's a spell as well, a racial called shadow melt what does shadow melt basically do it lets you drop out of combat and it will allow you to get out of it instantly because you're going to have many situations where you're stuck in combat you want to get out of combat and just use shadow melt and you're out of combat immediately yeah the next race is Dark Iron Dwarf. Dark Iron Dwarfs can be great for farming inside of dungeons due to their Dungeon Delver racial. That's basically, while indoors, move 4% faster, which increase movement speeds by 4% while in dungeons or inside something. They also have the Mole Machine racial, which can be used as a teleport to a huge amount of places in the world. The next race is Worgens. Worgens have Dark Flight, which grants them 40% speed for 10 seconds on a 10 minute cooldown. So these are all the races that are capable of speeding everything up. But in my opinion, Night Elves is the way to go on Alliance and Zandalari Troll is the way to go for Horde. One small disclaimer here. If you want to see what I'm seeing here on my screen at the top here, this, the numbers when I'm running, that add-on is basically called monkey speed. I tested it out because some people say it bugs out, but I have two add-ons here. I have mon mon monkey speed and then another one, but the other one is basically doing the exact same thing. So basically you're going to see your raw numbers even when you run. See? When I'm standing still, it says 0%, and as soon as I am start running, it will say 216%. And when I activate a speed buff here, it will say, see, 
even higher. These are all speed buffs. As you can see, the add-on is really handy. Get it so you don't have to do a lot of calculations for yourself. So the next part we're going to talk about is what professions are good. So the first profession that is actually really good for getting your speed set up to a par is jewel crafting. Why is jewel crafting really good? Well, basically, if you have Nortrend jewel crafting, you're going to be able to craft the figurine ruby hair trinket. That has two sockets and has an on use that gives you 30% speed for six seconds. It's a three minute cooldown, but the good thing is you can put two gems in there. And gems will become a pretty big part on the speed set why because of the azurite armor you're gonna stack up later on in the video so basically that's what you're gonna need and what else you can make from legion jewel crafting is the jeweled lock pick that's basically that is an item that will allows you to opening Locks that require up to 550 lock picking skill. The lock pick is consumed in the progress, but it's still good to bypass certain doors. You can't enter like a rogue and stuff like that. So it's always handy to have that. One big, um, yeah, how would I say it? I have one big reserve to this is because I prefer to have professions that are gathering professions like mining and herbalism so this profession thing is completely up to you if you don't want to have the jewel crafting um gem there are other options as well this one is the is one of the best but there are other options if you go higher than actually 61 yeah that's why i say this is not a fully optimized set this is a really good set but not optimized okay so from now on we're gonna start talking about the gearing and in I'm, I'm gonna explain it in the right order you have to do it okay so let's start with the gearing process so the very first step when it comes to gearing is obtaining your heart for azeroth heart of azeroth this one here if you do not have it yet that's the very 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 first step you want to do and I'm going to explain you why as well. But I'm first going to show you where he is located. The location is actually in Boralus, the quest giver. He is called the Urtern Guardian, a messenger of the speaker. These are the locations here. And a picture of where he is standing. And the most important thing about this, you need to be a level 50 to actually start this so as soon as you are level 50 if you're still leveling up your druid go to boralus and pick up the quest that you will be given by the urchin guardian and he will yeah just guide you through the um through the entire chain until you have the necklace as soon as you have the necklace Stop doing what you were doing, and then you're gonna go ahead to actually to Najatar. Yeah, and do the introduction quest in Najatar. If you have done it already on an, on a main or on an alt, you can skip certain parts, but that will allow you to get, as you can see here, my necklace is item level 194, and the effect on this necklace here is basically level 50. You're gonna need level 50 or it can be a bit lower but you need level 50 to let all your long strider buffs on your azurite gear works yeah i'm gonna explain you what azurite gear does and why you need it but the first thing you're gonna do now that's just a recap on the neck is make sure you are level 50 you are heading to azurite to boralus over here and you're going to pick up the quest to start to getting your heart of Azeroth. That's the very first step you're going to do. And then we're going to move to the next step.
of course. Okay, now we are getting to the fun part. The gearing. The gear. The goodies. Everything we need. Okay, let's start. As soon as your Heart of Azeroth, you have it, do the Najatar questline, like I said. The introduction quest for Najatar. And your neck will be 50 after doing the introduction quest. All you have to do is the introduction quest in Najatar until you reach the um, Magni, the Magni speaker of Azeroth. Magni, go back to Magni and you're going to get a quest that gives you level 50 on your Heart of Azeroth. That's what you need. So the first piece we're going to talk to you about is you have several options here. The easiest option is to get the one I'm wearing is Gonk Outrunner Mask. This one here, as you can see, I have long strider on this one here. Give me one second. I'm going to open it this way. So you got long strider on this one here. And what does long strider do? Long strider basically gives you a speed buff that is based on your secondary highest stat. So what does that mean? Really simple. Increases your movement speed by 11% for your highest secondary stat. The thing is, the higher you get the Azerite gear, the higher the speed buff will be. For example, as you can see here, over here I have a level 71 Bentic. I'm coming to that as well. Don't panic. I'm going to explain every piece how you can get it. And on my Gunk Outrider mask, item level 85, my speed buff is already 13. It can go up to 17 the higher you get these pieces. I'm going to explain how to get the higher pieces, but this is basically the non-RNG based set that you can get in one day. You can start off with this set and then you can follow the rest of the guide. So the first thing you're going to do is get Gunk's Out Outrunner's mask. You're gonna get that from a certain from certain world quests on the BFA map, or any quests that rewards Azerite armor cash. But you're gonna be you're gonna need to get lucky on that one because that's RNG. But you, I got mine from a world quest in BFA on Zanda on Zuldazar. Kill I had to kill one rare for it, and I got it. But it can be the reward for several world quest so just check your world quests on the bfa map and if it's up then do it if it's not up i got other options the other option is the grave torn hood what is the grave torn hood exactly the same world quest item so you have two items the gong the, the gong the one i am wearing here or the grave torn hood that's a world quest so we got several options if none of, in the world quest is up you can go to Toldagor, the last boss called Overseer to Corgus, he drops the Flash Powder Hood. That is basically as well one with Long Strider on it. And that one is actually your best option. Why? Because that one will have the highest amount of speed on your Long Strider. So the movement speed, because the item level is the highest on that one. But you can start with a Gonk or with the uh, grave torn hood and then just farm toldagor because toldagor is going to be a little bit of rng involved you can run it 100 times and not getting it so i want to leave as much of rng out of it as possible so you can actually start with this one okay so the neck i already covered the neck a bit so it's from the uh, you get the uh, neck from the uh, bfa intro quest line and is required to activate the azerite gear so you're gonna need that one at level 50 so we get all the traits from your azerite as you can see it's fully upgraded i got one two three four stats on on there on this one i got one two three four as well long strider and long strider only two on this one but you can have more but the only one you have to bother about is actually the long strider 
yeah you can level it up by collecting azurite as much as possible as well for the extra crit so if you if you are up to it i haven't done it because i'm happy with how my set looks now because it's already a 200 percent plus set but the higher you're gonna level the item level up i don't i'm not talking about um the the the, the level up the higher your crit is gonna be and how fast uh the faster your long strider trait will work because the long strider trait actually works as you can see here increases your movement speed by 13 percent of your highest secondary rating so your highest secondary rating at the moment for me here is mastery but i'm gonna regen myself a bit to get this one the highest because now basically what i have to do here is i gonna have to stack up mastery gems that's actually what i have done in certain uh, situations but try to get your crit up because that will scale way better with your um as right neck yeah so basically your, your your primary stats in the speed set is crit mastery haste versatility in that order you don't need a haste and versatility basically but crit highest mastery second if you if it happens to you your mastery is higher just gem mastery gems because that's your highest stat then but try to aim for crit because that scales best okay so there are other options you can put essences in here as you can see my essence slot is available if you're doing this on a character that has done a lot of bfa content you already have the neck try to get the stalwart battlefield a memento what does this what what will that essence give you really simple that will give you ripple in space what is ripple in space that will be create an azurite beacon at the target location after two seconds the heart of azurite will re relocate you to this beacon and deal fire damage to all nearby enemies and then the next one you're gonna get from there the minor power that's the it's the minor power that is really important reality shift your movement speed is increased by five percent and when you're moving more than 25 yards within four seconds you're gonna get primary stats it's not the primary stats that we are concerned about it's the movement speed so stalwart battlefield memento how can you get the battlefield memento there are several options there are three ranks for it so yeah rank one complete the quest drowning the horde or drowning the alliance in najatar complete the achievement fighting for two fronts and persage it from the vendor for 20 najatar battle commendations i'm not going too deep just type in on wohead what najatar battle commendations are or maybe you already have them then you can buy the rank two and the rank three is learn rank two and then complete 10 weekly call to arm quests to collect then purchase it from the vendor for 50 najatar battle commendations so basically you're gonna need 70 but there are other options to get it as well so just search up stalwart battlefield memento i don't have it yet that's one of my next steps i'm gonna do it's basically doing some pvp or basically doing some the yeah, lot uh, stuff okay that's all when it comes to the neck so we're going to the third piece now that's basically the shoulders i'm wearing the fathom stalker shoulder pads here so basically the fathom shoulders shoulder pads comes from a benthic armor piece from najatar you're already gonna have unlocked it um the only thing you're gonna need is unlock new home you're gonna do that um on a heart and mesamir on alliance you're gonna unlock them like i said with the introduction quest because you need to do the introduction quest it's a combination of the neck and these the only thing you're gonna have to buy is you go you will go to the vendor the benthic vendor and you buy those benthic spolders and you can buy them from finder palta or artisan inatu finder palta is the horde version so finder palta or artisan itanu and the bfa zone for five prismatic mana pearls each you're gonna need several pieces so this you can buy really easy five mana pearls if you don't have mana pearls just do one or two quests and you're gonna get them you're gonna swim in those prismatic mana pearls in najatar 
So Benthic Spoilers is bind on account. So if you already have the pearls on another character, you can buy it and send it over to your speed farming druid. If you have an alt that has been in Najatar, you can actually send these sets over. This is bind on account gear. Yeah, so basically the, the item to learn it. Okay, the next step is the cloak. So the cloak we're gonna get is called the Shadow Lace Cloak, item level 233. Yeah. Crafted by non equip gear, you can buy it on the auction house, and it has to have the pure air cell extensions attached. What are the pure cell extensions? Increases speed by 58 and increases ground mount speed by 10% while in the Shadowlands. That's not the important one, but the important one is the increased speed by 58. I'm gonna recap everything I'm saying here in a small spreadsheet. So we're gonna see what pieces you actually need and where to get them. Okay. So the next part here is the Fathom Stalkers wraps. Basically the same, Benthic chest guard you get it from the same vendors i was talking about about the shoulders just buy a benthic chest piece and send it over it's five prismatic mana pearls as well so the next are the wrists that's a tricky one the best one you can get is basically the legendary the rune carving power from uh the rune carver person uh, this one needs you need 1500 honor you need to have rune carving unlocked in shadowlands the rune carving i'm not going too deep in that into that i'm just talking about how to get the gear and basically you're gonna have to uh have 1500 honor from the pvp vendor you can buy it for, for 1500 honor from the pvp vendor in oribos you want to apply it to the highest rank of umbrahide arm guards so basically that's a combination you have to make the legendary like you did in shadowlands guys so you know how to make a legendary in shadowlands but get out of the elder druid why you should get this one because this one has a socket on it yeah i'm gonna talk about gems as well don't worry about it i'm gonna talk about gems as well which ones to get so this is the best option i am wearing these why am i wearing these because i don't have I don't unlocked it yet because again this guide is about how to get a fast set because if you get out of the elder dude you're gonna be higher in speed than i am but i bought these from the auction house shade bound arm guards with the speed enchanted plus 40 speed and the increased speed by 58 yeah so you have two options the better options the better option is get the shade bound why it's way faster to get it the next piece we're going to talk about are the hands here shade bound gauntlets these can be bought of the all the shade bound gear can be bought of the auction house item level 233 and again with the speed on it just search them it's going to be the most expensive piece because i think i paid around let me see i can see it i paid 9400 gold for this one and i paid 9999 gold for this one so you're gonna need some gold or find somebody that actually can craft it for you yeah people can craft it so as you can see here mine has been crafted by plajut or something okay the waist same story shade boned a waist guard shade bone as well buy it on the auction house with the speed on it leggings exact same story shade bound griefs with speed on it and now we are coming to the next part the boots yeah so basically the boots are you have several options but this one is the best option why this is the only item one of the very few boots you can have two sockets on it why shouldn't you go higher really simple and i actually i think i still got them in my bags okay i got them here as you can see here this one is a level item level 32 you can get higher as well if you want to it doesn't really matter but check the difference here above now i'm at 195 speed yeah if i gonna put these on i bought them i had them this one planes runners breeze that's basically a speed buff as well this are the shade bounds. Look at the difference, how much it will go down. See, it's almost 5%. So do not buy 
the shade bound threads i bought them off the auction house for quite a penny i paid sixteen thousand just to make this video so yeah you can actually show it when i have them equipped okay so get these the fell leather boots you can buy them from the auction house daddy expensive as well but if you're a gold farmer building a speed set you're already gonna have enough gold to buy these I gemmed them with cheap gems, so the crit, the crit, the, the plus four crit is important here, and that will give you a half percent on speed. A half percent is a half percent. So if you have, if you can buy a fell letter higher, let us say around item level fifty, you can buy them up to fifty. Then buy the fifty version. Buy the highest item level you can find, because the higher the item level on the fell letter boot is, the higher gems you can put in, and put crit gems in here. Pure crit gems. I'm gonna explain why you're not putting the, the speed gems in here, but put the speed uh, the crit put crit gems or mastery gems in here. The next part is we're gonna talk about rings here. I was very unlucky because your main goal with rings is to get as much crit as possible on them. Or mastery for that matter, but I'm going with the crit because I'm gonna rebuild my set slightly so I will get the 2% more crit, so I go above the mastery here, yeah. You can enchant them with Tenet of Critical Strike, and then you're gonna get more crit. But as you can see here, this one has speed on it, and this one has speed on it, them as well. These can be bought, these both can be bought from the auction house as well. It works the same like the Shade Bound, just get two rings with the right stats on it. So basically speed. Be really careful because these, you can't buy two of these because as you can see they are a unique equipped. So buy one versatile selenium ring and buy one deadly synfear ring. So basically these do not share the same unique, unique equipped by these two. And then we are going to talk about the trinkets. So the very first trinket, if you have, if you picked up jewel crafting, like I said at the at the start of the video, you should make the figurine ruby hair. Yeah, because that one has two gems on it. If you don't have that one, just buy any Shadowlands BOE with speed with speed on it, such as a relic or, or the first ones or Hope Breakers batch. Um, you gotta find a few trinkets on the auction house. I gonna link them over here as well there you go these are all trinkets that can have speed buffs on on there weapons basically same story the best weapon is a shadowland boe with plus speed on it remember this is a level 61 druid don't go higher than level 61 so a Shadowland BOE with speed on it, you can also get plus speed to proc on weapons from Raids or Mythic Plus, but it requires much more RNG and effort. So this is as RNG little as possible. The, your best option is going to be one, Truth, truth Seeker's Staff. Gonna, you're going to pay quite a penny if, if it has speed on it. And the Inevitable Inevitable Spire. Going to link them both here. There you go. Okay, now let's talk about gems and enchants. So, the best speed enchants at the moment are on your headpiece, nothing. On your shoulders, nothing. On your cloak, get a fortified speed. So, fortified speed will give you plus 20 stamina and minor speed increase. On your chest, you can actually get nothing until you're level 70, and then you're gonna have to replace these gear as well. But at level, if you're level 70, you can buy actual speed enchants. But this is not, we're not talking about this level 70. I'm gonna make a level 70 later this month, but now it's just for this. So keep this one open. On the bracers, you can actually enchant them with plus 40 speed. That's a rid of speed, tier 3. On your weapons, nothing for the time being. The one you can get is basically Deadly Navigation. What does Deadly Navigation gives you? It will sometimes increase your critical strike by 8 for 30 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. If you can find a better one at level 70, just replace your weapons as well. If you use the weapons with speed. I'm not using the weapons with speed. 
because at the moment there are none available on my auction house sadly enough so i'm gonna have to do it with what i have yeah so on the hands we're gonna get speed as well yeah but the speed is already on it so no enchant on the wrist on the waist no enchant on the leggings you can get several ones but nothing that gives you speed buffs on the boots this one is the this is one of the most important ones you can get the minor speed increase just buy it from the auction house and jam it on that as you saw earlier in the video that the difference is really high between the shade bound reefs and cheap boots try to get them at level 50 or higher so we can get better gems in here than the ones i am using on the rings same story enchanted plus 18 critical strike 18 critical strike or mastery depending on your highest stats yeah so basically the gems you're gonna put in are straddling viridium straddling sage agati Swaddling Jewel Double and Crit or Mastery Gems. Yeah, I got the Deadly Jewel Cluster that's plus 16 critical strike, but that's basically the one I'm gonna use once I'm level 70. But the most important for you are Straddling Viridium, Straddling Siagati, as you can see here, three movement speed, five movement speed, plus 13 speed, and critical strike or anything for that matter what you want and that was my whoa shadowlands based basically it's a shadowlands based jude speed set guide for level 61 again a disclaimer because i'm gonna get comments i'm already sure about it this is not the right way of doing it scully this is the right way of doing it when you are level 61 and you want to get it in one day everything i explain in this guide can be obtained within one day and from that point on you can start building up but as you saw i'm over 200 i'm deep into the 200s when i'm using the um the buffs and so so the last thing we're going to talk about now before i end is the consumables so we only need two consumables and what is the consumables really simple the charged vial of alacrity, alacrity or something like that increases your speed by 743 last 30 minutes and through that so we can even die 30 minutes by a few i got 25 in my bags here that's the that's the only reason you need to be 61 to use this one if you're not going to use that one stay 60 but i assure you this is one of the biggest differences as you saw earlier look now i am at 194 and if i use this i'm going to 215 220 even this one here the fried bone fish you don't have to look to the restore 40k health and 40 53 mana but must remain seated if you spend at least 10 seconds eating you will become well fed and gain speed for a short time after killing an enemy so this will give you speed for six seconds if you're killing enemies but if you're farming you, this is basically a constant buff you're gonna have yeah so this will bring you with these two buffs that will this will this set with these two things will bring you to around 230 235 speed buff the highest you can go now i did some research apparently is 265 speed if you get all the correct items but i'm gonna talk about that in the next video because this video again was just how to obtain a speed set that is decent enough easy enough in one day so we can actually start farming as you can see here again i'm running like a devil this is actually 195 speed not buffed so what else can you expect Thanks for watching guys this was a really long one for me to make um i edited a lot in this one so basically i hope you liked it please subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content or my gold guides and thanks for watching guys see you later next video is coming really soon bye bye